Well, you sort of get your non, your non shells in. Are you looking on to it now? I think you are. I'll say I should have it looking up my nose or I shouldn't have it looking up my up my nose oh I don't know I've probably got it looking up my nose again hmm oh well <laughs> it is what it is welcome to vlog number two. Oh, I wanted to say thank you very much for those of you who watched my video last month and who like pressed the like button I so appreciated that and I got such lovely feedback. Um, hope you enjoy this one as much. And this month, I finished a mitered square blanket for one of my besties. Her daughter's having a baby and her daughter is not a pale pink and pale blue kind of girl. <clears throat> She's a hippie at heart, a bit like me. So I've done her a blanket with that in mind and I'm sure she's going to love it. I thought I'd just show you, try and show you this blanket in all its glory, even though it's quite difficult to film. I don't have a big enough space and I really do not want to put it on the floor because it's all been washed and ready to go. Here's some of the speckles. That's a one of my, well they're all my hand dyed yarns, but that's a cashmere and merino mix, not a speckle. There's another cashmere merino mix, where there, there's one. Um, the Knitted Mitered Square Blanket is also known as a memory blanket. It was a free pattern download, and if you see my show notes for details. This classic knit mitered square pattern creates a perfect square without having to calculate a stitch or a row gauge. I mean, why knit a swatch if you don't have to? You can always use the same pattern for any yarn or needle size and it always creates a perfect square. It's actually easy enough for beginners to master. Good fun as well. I loved it. I've dyed some wool for the shop. Only a little bit. It's, it, I haven't actually managed to do a major dyeing session this month, but I have dyed a little bit and there is a video on that. And um, pretty much, yeah, been to London. Went to Loop with my sister. The Massams died. That's all looking rather pink. Pink Massams as well. Also, a little video on um, how I make my labels, which are all handmade. In fact, we'll go straight to that now. So also this month, um, my sister and I get to London. Um, we went to Loop Yarn. We walked along the canal, picked it up at Camden, walked down through King's Cross as far as we could to Islington. We had to come up at Islington, um, meander our way through the high street and set behind the high street is a, a little, little little village a little area of shops called Camden Passage 
which is just full of cute cute little antique shops vintage shops gift shops beautiful little cake shops eateries as my sister experienced bubble tea for the first time that was good she thoroughly enjoyed that she made her bubble tea last few hours and was still so excited every time she found another bubble hours later which amused me no end um yeah we made it to loop and here's a video Why you won't come down?
here's the mashem. <laughs> no, here's the masam wool. It's um I ended up dyeing it with Dharma Valentine blush, which is a palish dustiest dust dustyish pink. It's a colour I usually like to speckle with because speckles are very concentrated, so when the speckles are on the wool they come out a very, very, very dark pink, which is just a little bit softer than black speckles, but have the similar effect. But on this, I used a 1% dye, 1% stock. That is one gram of dye to 100 ml of water. And the wool has come out, bearing in mind it was a fawn base to start with, it's come out really nice, yeah. Just a dusty pink and there's 450 grams in four cakes that should be on the website this month. I didn't get much. I haven't been able to dye any wool yet because I've been super busy this month doing other things. And as a result of last month's vlog, I was given an order to make some socks for some friends of mine who fly hot air balloons and they wanted some socks in the colours to match the balloon, which is yellow and black. So there's a little video on me dyeing the wool for that, which isn't quite the video I, I want to put out every month. I would like to put out a video of the month's wool that I've actually dyed, but I haven't been able to dye any yet, but I have been making so many socks. These were the yellow base with the black speckles. These are the men's socks. And the other colourway was on a cream base, but it was also Oh, please excuse my nails. I was tie-dyeing with my grandson yesterday. Not a bit black at all. And he decided out of all the 18 colour tie-dyes we've got, he wanted to do black socks. There you are. That's a six-year-old's creative licence for you. I let him do it, even though I was desperate for him to do rainbow. We did do rainbow too. They came out really nice, the black socks. He's taken them home with him, so I can't show you. And they wanted some socks to match the balloon, of course they did. They wanted them long enough so they could wear them with walking boots. And I'm hoping once I deliver the socks to them and they fit, they'll send me pictures and I'll post some pictures for you. I'll probably pop them onto Instagram. But I made four pairs of socks for them, which may sound easy, but that's actually 16, no it's not, four pairs of socks. It's eight, eight ribs, eight heels and eight toes. Yes, that's right. And I'm winding my way through and I'm not quite finished. This is the last tube I've got. This is uh, this is tube for Brian. So it's a 72, it's done on a 72 cylinder, which um, makes them a little bit bigger than the lady socks, which are done on a 64 needle cylinder. I also dyed a little bit extra, which I will pop into the shop this month. So that's a yellow base with a a black and a black and grey and neon yellow sort of speckling. Um, it's done on a merino and nylon sock base. Really nice. I've put together a little video of how these socks were actually made from beginning right through to end. I hope you enjoy it.
here you see me setting up the sock knitting machine ready to crank out some sock tubes. I start by hanging a cast on or a set up bonnet as it's also known. The idea is to hang a loop on every other needle but some of my loops on the sock bonnet have broken so I just hang where I can and that is what is, forms the base for the waist yarn. There's a point in the setup where you hang a weight and then you're able to complete uh, hanging the last few loops onto the needles. With the cylinder knitting machine, as you turn it, the needles try to fix themselves and try to pick up each stitch. Sometimes a little help is needed and eventually every needle is ready to take the main yarn. If you watch, you'll see what I mean. I did get finished this month were for my one of my besties Bex and they're for her birthday which was on Friday so I need to get this video done just so I can give her these socks they're finished yay <laughs> and I think when I showed them to you last month I'd, I'd done the toes and the ribs and I was going to just insert the afterthought heel which is there why is that blurring out let's go like that Let's just try and do this with it. No, that's not doing anything. Let's zoom in. Oh, that's zooming out. Let's just zoom in. See what happens. Oh yes, look at that. And there's the heel. I hope she's gonna like them. They're so cute. So I'm just looking what else we it's gonna be in this month's video. Yes, there is a little boat trip. This is our first boat trip since lockdown not since lockdown since last july because remember last year we were actually allowed out to play for a little bit and we managed to get a two week glorious two weeks on the boat and head off towards leeds but since then we have been locked down and although lockdown was lifted is it april was it april may could have been beginning of may for us to start 
for the boats and everything to start getting back to normal we've not been allowed out to play on the boat because there's been a breach of on the canals a big problem two miles up and the CRT have actually closed the full canal off so poor old us in Gaul are stuck there for now it's going to be finished and ready it's going to cost apparently three million pounds to do and we're going to be good to go in August which I've heard that once that happens, the CRT are going to close the canal further up, just a few miles further up, to do more repairs for another five months. <sighs> no comment. Anyway, we're planning a trip for, or a big trip for August. In the meantime, we got away for the Sunday, and it was a gorgeous afternoon. The weather was, yeah, the weather was okay. We had a bit of rain. Of course, it's England in June. What do we expect? We had some rain, we had some sun, we had some wind all good, all in a few hours. We got up the canal, we made some food, we sat and chatted and in the long grass, then we wound our way back and it was just a really nice way to spend Sunday afternoon. The breach is approximately two miles up the canal which gave us a four mile round trip. I've speeded up the rest of the journey back to the marina, the long and straight run that takes us back to Gaul, the canal's end point. The air in Calder is a commercial canal and up ahead on the left we are going to see um, some of the commercial ships and tankers that have been tied up and unable to travel since mm, December now 2020. Coming up on the left is the blue one, is the Exol Pride. It's a 60 metre long oil tanker that usually travels from Gaul to Rotherham. But like all of us, it's stuck here for now. Back at the marina, and a sharp left is needed to get us safely back to the jetty and some nifty steering. I'm hoping to pop a little mini vlogette on in a few weeks um, which will be showing you the wool I've dyed this month for the shop and next month I need to sort all my boxes out so I'm going to get a huge mountain of wool out and we'll sort through it all that'll be something really nice to do um, my wool is kept in boxes and I suppose it is my stash it's my shop, this is my stash, I can do what I want and use what I want. So yeah, we'll be sorting through my stash next month. And thank you so much for all your support and help and likes. Can you please keep liking the like button. That really makes a difference to YouTube and where they place my video. It's something to do with the algorithms. And so please like and possibly subscribe even. I, that would be great too. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it this time. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see any questions pop them in down below and I'm really happy to answer them you know how to contact me I'm Lisa at Ivy and Lily Yarns 
um, I can be contacted at Ivy and Lilians on Instagram, on Facebook, although I'm still no good with Facebook. Um, and yeah, you can find me, it's quite easy. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to chatting with you again very soon. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.